Pranima, can you see the slides as well? No, I'm, I'm not on WebEx. I'm, I'm dialed into the WebEx number. OK. All right, that's I fine. See the slides. OK. So, um, so okay. You need a mic can you hear me? Oh. Yeah, we can hear you very well. And the whole uh, auditorium can hear you also. Okay, so I'm going to introduce Pranima, who's on the phone. Um, Pranima is a graduate student at, at Johns Hopkins University, and um, it was easier for us to do this with her on WebEx, so I'm going to attempt to drive the slides as she goes <coughs> through. Wherever the mouse is to move it. <laughs> okay, I'm good. All right, Pranima, you're up. Um, um, okay, I'll start now. Um, are we on the first slide? We are. Okay. Um, so I will talk about um, automated detection of asteroids uh, on board a spacecraft. And this project is a collaborative effort between um, <coughs> the School of Engineering, which um, I am part of, and Hopkins Applied Physics Lab. Next slide. Um, so the main objectives of this project are to develop um, asteroid detection algorithms that can be hosted on a spacecraft and implement this in flight-like environment uh, to see if, this is, if it is feasible to perform onboard detection and also uh, apply machine learning techniques to, to minimize uh, false positives. Um, next slide. So I will uh, describe the algorithm, um, show the analysis results, and then discuss some of the, uh, the ongoing work. Um, slide number four. So here is our uh, image processing pipeline. Um, we assume that uh, we have a sequence of uh, three or more overlapping images that are taken uh, a few minutes apart. And also the imaging conditions are such that um, the asteroid is visible in, in most of these images. Um, next slide. So here are three images of asteroid uh, CY46 from the, from the NEET archive, and these are taken about uh, 15 to 20 minutes apart. So this is our um, input image sequence uh, to the pipeline. Okay. Next slide. Uh, so we start off with uh, some basic image processing like median filtering and uh, dynamic thresholding uh, to remove the noise. And we also do some image registration when required. Um, slide number seven. So this is followed by uh, logical differencing with a common intersection image um, in order to get rid of all the stationary objects like stars in the background. So if an object is present in at least two <coughs> images, then it's a, a stationary object. So the images that you see here are the result of uh, logical differencing. So since there are slight differences in exposure ac across the images, uh, we do not get rid of all the background stars fully in this space. So as you can see in the, in the rightmost image in this slide, um, there are crater-like artifacts around the stars. So this image uh, clearly needs further cleaning up. Uh, next slide. Um, so we now um, replace uh, each connected component in the logical difference image by its uh, center of gravity um, and filter these components based on um, the, the size and shape. Um, so at this point, uh, we have a um, uh, a set of candidate movers in each of these images. Um, next slide. Um, so now, um, from the uh, from the potential movers in each image, we find uh, which of these um, detections correspond to an actual line. So, if we use four images in the sequence, uh, we pick up only those detections that actually form a line. Uh, with a certain uh, constant threshold. So if, um, um, for example, we choose uh, 
the alkaline content threshold in a sequence of four immediates. Uh, if at least three of them line up to form a line, we say that, okay, this is a valid trajectory for the asteroid. Um, next slide, slide number 10. So here is the result um, on the on the neat triplet. Uh, the, the three images are uh, superimposed uh, so that we can see the, the resultant asteroid trajectory in a, in a single image. Um, so the, the true location of the asteroid is marked in red. And, uh, and the line detected by the pipeline is, is shown in green. Um, next slide. So these images show the results on uh, Catalina Sky Survey data. Um, on the left side, we use triplets, that is uh, three images in the sequence. And um, on the right side, we have used four images in our input sequence. So having more images in the, in the sequence helps eliminate the, the number of false positives. So on the right, we, we detect only one line, and that is the true line. Slide number 12. Here are some of the, the potential sources of real data uh, of these uh, NEAT, Catalina, and PANSTARS are ground-based systems. And NEOVITE is uh, space-based, but it was difficult to obtain uh, real space-based imagery that <coughs> met our assumption. Um, and also to get a fairly large number of images to perform statistical analysis uh, was extremely difficult. Because of this reason, we uh, decided to use simulated imagery to perform our um, statistical analysis. Um, next slide. So we will now move on to uh, showing some results on um, the performance. Uh, next slide, slide number 14. So the image simulation was um, done by uh, JHU APL. Uh, the imagery was generated for uh, a large number of telescope parameters and uh, asteroid characteristics. Uh, we used around uh, 2,000 image sequences to plot our um, ROC curves. Next slide. Um, so we plot um, ROC curves that are stratified based on um, asteroid size, um, distance from the telescope, and, and also the the FNR, and we compute the FNR uh, for the for the whole image sequence. Um, so we define the signal um, as as shown here. So we choose a, a three by three window around the asteroid ground plane. Uh, pick up the the maximum pixel value within this window for each image in the sequence, and the, the median of these maximum values would be the the signal. And uh, to, to figure out the noise for the sequence, we, we removed the, the upper 10% of the gray levels to, to get rid of all the bright stars, and then compute the, the, the mean of the remaining pixels in each image uh, and find the median of the extreme mean. And the ratio of this would give the, the FNR for the image sequence. Next slide. So on the here is the, the ROC curve for um, 180 image sequences with asteroid size ranging from 30 meters to 160 meters. Um, the images were generated using uh, integration time of 90 seconds and a purchase size of 0.5 meters. And there is exactly one asteroid uh, per image in this data set. And the y-axis um, shows the true positives per sequence. Uh, it is the mean number of two asteroid detections in each image in the sequence. So since we have used four images to generate these plots, um, if we find the asteroid in all four of them, the true positive number would be, would be one. And the x-axis of this plot um, has the false positives per sequence, uh, which is the mean number of false detections in each image in the sequence. So now if we look at the plot on the left, uh, we separated the asteroids based on size. And the size ranges from 30 to 160 meters. These are all fairly small asteroids. 
and the blue curve um, shows the result for asteroids that are larger than or equal to 80 meters. And so the, we can detect all of them fairly uh, accurately. And the, the true positive is one for most values of the threshold that we have used in the pipeline. And, but if we go to smaller asteroids, uh, for example, the, the curve in red uh, is for um, a really small asteroid of size 30 meters. And uh, we see that it is much harder to detect them. The, the true positive number is just 0.1. Um, so, um, so the plot on the right, um, it is a very similar curve, but we have separated the asteroid based on the on the sequence SNR. Uh, so here again, we see that the, the larger the SNR, the easier it is to detect. Um, that the, the blue curve has SNR that is larger than or equal to two, and for any value of the um, of the parameter we use in the pipeline, we reliably detect all of them, and it gets much harder for the red curve, which is for SNR less than 1.1. 1 .1. Um, next slide. So here we have done the, the same thing for, um, you know, we have separated the ROT as a function of distance. Um, so um, um, the curve on the left is for a, a small asteroid of size 50 meters. So as the distance, uh, if the asteroid is very close to us, we can detect it fairly reliably as shown by the blue curve. And uh, for a 50-meter asteroid that is really far from the telescope, as shown by the, the red plot, the red curve in the, in the plot on the left, um, it is harder to pick up. Um, the, the plot on the right um, is exactly the same. The only difference is that uh, it is for a much smaller asteroid. The size is only 30 meters. And here we see that even at, at, the, at the close range, uh, we cannot detect them all the time. Um, next slide, um, slide number 18. Uh, so here um, um, we have uh, shown how the, the, the detection changes as we move from one stage of the pipeline to the other. So if you look at the, the plot on the left, the, the, blue, the, the red curve in the plot on the left, that is the very first stage of the pipeline. So here we see that the, the number of false positives is much higher. And then we move, as we move through the pipeline uh, and reach all the way to the, the line detection stage, the, the, the number of false positives drastically reduces. <coughs> And on the right, we, we have used five images from the sequence. Um, again, as, as mentioned before, um, the, the number of false positives reduced as we also increase the, the number of images in the sequence. Um, <coughs> next slide, uh, slide number 19. Um, so this algorithm was first implemented in MATLAB, then ported to C++ using um, Microsoft Visual Studio. Uh, this was then adapted to Linux and the works by APL. And the uh, benchmarking was done using uh, flight qualified equivalent uh, VxWorks 6.4 on um, NCP 750 processor. Next slide. So here are the, uh, the performance results on NCP 750. Um, it takes about uh, 50 seconds to, to process one image sequence. NCP 750 processors have um, 128 MB RAM, uh, a clock speed of about 233 megahertz. So it has much less processing power than, than a laptop. So this shows that our pipeline can fit in light like environment. Um, next slide. So this is uh, a, a summary of the results that we have so far. Um, so our analysis shows that um, asteroids of um, maybe 80 meter and larger can be detected even at a large distance from the spacecraft, that's 0.4 AU uh, from the spacecraft. And uh, when, when the size gets lower, that is asteroids of radius uh, 50 meters are detectable at uh, 0.15 and 0.2 AU from the spacecraft. 
uh, but then the detection is very sensitive to the, the threshold that we use in the pipeline. And asteroids of um, radius 30 meter cannot be seen for distances that are greater than or equal to uh, 0.3 AU. And for smaller values of distance, um, the detection improves, but it is quite sensitive to the threshold used. And even at a very uh, small distance, um, um, the smaller asteroids um, are not consistently detected. So far, our uh, focus has been on uh, detecting the faintest asteroids without really worrying about the number of false detections. Uh, but uh, in order to perform um, real onboard detection, we also need to, to reduce uh, the false detection rate. Um, an obvious solution is to use more images in the sequence um, so that we get higher confidence scores for the detected lines. And the other is to use uh, machine learning to, to differentiate between uh, good and bad triplets. Next slide, slide number 23. Uh, so we did some preliminary experiments using uh, binary support vector machines. Um, uh, the lines detected by the final phase of the pipeline was used as the input um, to the classifier. So we, we picked up all the detections um, from the final stage of the pipeline and took uh, small windows around these detections um, to form uh, a feature vector of dimension 100 for a quadruplet of images. And these became the, the feature vectors for the support vector machine. And uh, we used the asteroid ground truth to get the 01 label for these trajectories. And uh, we did some uh, tenfold cross validation on this on a triplet. Um, slide number 24. Uh, so to perform this experiment, we used 180 image sequences that were generated using aperture size of 0.5 meter and integration time of 90 seconds. Um, so this table here shows the result for uh, a quadruplet of images um, using a line threshold of four and on three different uh, kernels, three different SVM kernels. So we have fairly high overall accuracy for detection, and uh, the true positive accuracy is in the high 99%. Uh, so this clearly is uh, a good direction to pursue. Um, next slide, slide number 25. Um, so, um, so this is what we have so far. Um, so we are planning to pursue um, um, the um, using machine learning techniques further on larger sets of images that are generated with um, different noise parameters and different um, asteroid and telescope parameters. And uh, we are also in the process of uh, finding a, a reasonably large collection of real space-based imagery uh, on, the, on which we can further validate our algorithm performance. And uh, lastly, we are also planning to optimize the algorithm to more refined flight characteristics. Next slide. Um, so here are the team members from um, JHU APL and Hopkins School of Engineering. Um, that is all I have today. Thanks. Other questions? Thank you very much. Thanks, Janina.